and then uh, it's open bar questions. Uh, I will uh, come back to exercises, uh, whatever, to get you ready for a successful exam tomorrow. So I remind you that we wrote uh, of, for a system of, uh, of ions in solution. So if you have, uh, let's say, a certain number of species with uh, fugacity lambda i and charges q i, the partition function can be written as a functional integral d phi e to the minus beta epsilon over 2 integral d r gradient phi of r square minus i beta rho f of r phi of r plus sum over i lambda i integral dr e to the minus i beta qi phi of r. So this was what we have painfully shown two classes ago and uh, which I've been discussing yesterday. So let me specialize to simplify a little bit the notation to the case of a salt 1-1, one, one, which means that uh, there is Q plus equals, uh, so Q minus, there are two kinds of charges, Q minus and Q plus. So Q minus is minus Q plus. And, uh, so, and, Q minus, and Q plus equals, equals E one electronic charge to, to simplify. And I will study, to, to simplify also, I will study a bulk solution. So it's a salt and bulk for simplification. So rho f equals. So, of course, uh, the concentration C0 of the salt, it's, it's a neutral object. So the concentration of the plus and the minus charges is the same. So it's the same lambda for both. So this term reduces to lambda e to the minus i beta e phi plus e to the plus i beta e phi. And so the partition function can be written as an integral over all field configurations phi as e to the minus beta epsilon over 2 integral dr gradient phi square plus 2 lambda integral dr cosine beta e phi. And it's a three-dimensional integrals or any dimensional depending on where you are. By the way, there is something I forgot to, to tell you, which is an interesting thing, that if the system is in one dimension, then the problem is like quantum mechanics. Uh, if you, for those of you who have studied um, Feynman path integrals, it's just a note in passing. I won't talk about. I will. I, I will not ask you that in the in the exam. But you see, if you are in one D, if R is one D, so all the integrals here are some. Let's say between 0 and L, if L is the size of the system. So this term is some, something like sum from 0 to R, uh, to L, integral dx, uh, d phi by dx square. And then you have some uh, potential term, v of phi of x. And this uh, exponential of something like that, it's uh, like a Feynman path integral, and therefore it's, it represents the matrix element of uh, imaginary time evolution operator, quantum mechanical operator. And this allows to solve all these models in 1D by just solving the corresponding Schrodinger equation. Okay, this is an, a remark in passing. So, as I said before, the way the standard way to evaluate this kind of integral is by doing a, a, a loop expansion. So you write that this is an integral d phi, so introduce this fake artificial parameter e to the minus l. So l is a parameter and we will look for asymptotic expansion 
beta epsilon over 2 integral gradient phi square minus 2 lambda integral cosine beta e phi. And of course, this is to be taken at L equals 1 at the end. But before taking L equals 1, you do an asymptotic expansion for L going to infinity. So you expand, you get a free energy, as we saw, that you can expand in powers of 1 over L. And uh, this free energy, right, this is e to the minus beta L times some F0 plus a correction term, which goes like 1 over L F1 plus etc. And the systematic loop expansion will give you all the various terms of this expansion in powers of 1 over L. So the way to do, as we saw, is first you look for the saddle point. So if I call this object S of phi, a certain function of phi, the saddle point is defined, is phi zero, defined by delta s by delta phi zero of r equals zero. And so here the functional derivative of this with respect to phi will give you, so the functional derivative of this term is minus beta, the factor two disappears, so it, minus beta epsilon Laplacian phi zero. Uh, so it's plus two lambda beta E sine beta E phi zero equals zero. And as you remember, the, the real electrostatic potential is psi zero equals I phi zero. So in terms of, uh, of psi zero, if you replace phi zero by uh, minus I psi zero, you get the equation, which is that minus epsilon Laplacian psi zero equals, uh, so Laplacian equals two lambda E sinh beta E psi zero. Right, this is just a trivial thing. Anyway, it's trivial in the sense that if you're in the bulk, as we are here, the solution, the obvious solution to this equation, you have translational invariance because the system is homogeneous, and so the solution is just psi zero equals zero, or phi zero equals zero. So in a salt solution, an infinite salt solution, the electrostatic potential is zero, everything is zero, and to zeroth order, I just replace here phi by phi zero. So to zeroth order, I get that z is e to the minus l times minus two lambda. So it's plus two l lambda times the volume. And so this is e to the minus beta f zero. So. Okay, uh, I forgot also to write something, which is that the lambda, lambda is the fugacity of the system, and it is determined by the fact that the total number of particles is determined by lambda, who, so it's the total average number of particles, and it's given by n average is equal to lambda d by d lambda, of log z. Now, this is the total number of charges. So here, if I have n plus ions, n minus ions, with n plus equals n minus, so this is two, so this is two, so it's really two n of, uh, each ion species, because this is really the total number of ions which you have here, because you have the same lambda for each species of ion. So this is really two n ions. 
So here, if you see this equation, and this is e to the minus beta L F zero, because the, right, the, the first order term is here. So you see that F zero over V or minus or better log Z is equal to two lambda V which implies that 2n equals lambda d by d lambda log z equals 2 log 2 lambda v, which means that lambda equals n over v, which is just C0, the concentration of one of each species of ion. So you see that to lower solder, the fugacity is just the concentration of the ions. And that's very general. If you have many species like this, at any to lowest order, lambda i at order zero is just the concentration, the bulk concentration of the I, ions number i. Sorry? Uh, not really. It's because I am doing the expansion in powers of L. So the first order term is e to the minus beta L F zero. And here I have L also, so I don't put L equals one yet. I identify order by order. Okay. So this was simple enough. And now I go to the Bayhuckel theory. Or let me not call it the Bayhuckel for the moment. So it's quadratic fluctuations. So quadratic fluctuation is, you write that phi of r is phi zero of r. And phi zero of r, we saw that phi zero is zero, so I will not write it. Okay, plus one over square root of L psi of r. And psi is called the fluctuating field. So, so this is zero, the saddle point value of phi of psi is zero, and therefore uh, we can write the correction term so in the exponent since phi zero is zero then the partition function reduces to, so there was this term when I put phi zero equals zero, so I have, so it's integral dx, so z is the, yes? Because phi zero is the solution of this equation and we solve it as phi zero equals zero, right? I, so I have my saddle point and then I look at fluctuations around the saddle point. So. I write that I make just this is a change of variable, right? Phi is the maximally the the field which has the maximal weight in your exponent, and then you look at small fluctuations around that field and you expand in powers of these fluctuations. And the fact that it's small fluctuations is reflected by the fact that you put a factor of one over square root of L. Yes? Yes. We just say that psi is psi, psi is i psi zero is i phi zero. This is because we saw that the electrostatic potential is related to the integration field by um, in the, in all this formalism the real electrostatic potential which I write psi is expectation value of i phi. No, because you see, if you multiply both sides by i, I multiply this equation by i. So i phi zero is psi zero, and i sin sine beta e phi is sinh beta e phi. Right, that's a, 
because it's 1 over 2i e to the i beta e phi 0 minus i. So you multiply by i, this disappears, and this is psi 0 minus psi 0. So z, so the first there is, so z is integral d psi of e to the minus l beta epsilon over 2 integral gradient psi square minus 2 lambda integral cosine beta e psi. So psi over l, over square root of l, right? Because phi I write as psi over square root of l. And then you expand. So you expand to sort of, so I'm looking at the correction, the quadratic correction, that's the term of order one over L. So I, so this is already of order one over L. So if I want this term to order one over L, I expand to second order. And the cosine to order one over L here will be one minus beta E square psi square over two L. So the one with the e to the minus 2 lambda will give me the term e to the 2 lambda L V, right? It's the contribution of the 1. If I put 1 here, when you integrate the 1, it gives the volume. So the volume times lambda L. So this is the zeroth order contribution that we got before. And then, so I put approximately because I stopped to second order. Then I have integral d psi of e to the minus. So I have a factor of L here, which cancels this one, and this one also because I have, by definition, I have expanded to order 1 over L. So my quadratic form here, which goes like psi square, has a factor 1 over L in front. Okay? So the result is e to the minus uh, beta, so beta epsilon over 2 integral gradient psi square minus 2 lambda, right? I have minus, 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 so 3 times minus, it's minus psi, minus 2 lambda beta e square over 2 integral psi square. And this I rewrite as integral d psi e to the minus beta epsilon over 2 integral dr of psi, gradient psi square plus kappa d square psi square, where kappa d is the Debye length, uh, I mean the Debye parameter which you read of here, so kappa d square is equal to 2 lambda beta e square. Uh, no, sorry, I made a mistake. It's beta square, beta square. But since I factorize beta epsilon, so it's 2 lambda beta e square over epsilon. So, yes? Sorry? Just a Yes, but you see uh, the fact that it's a maximum or a minimum, you will see by looking at the fluctuations, because the fluctuation is like the second derivative of the function. So if the quadratic form, which is here, is definite positive, it means that you were at a minimum. And of course, when you look at it like this, when you go to Fourier transform, you see that this is k squared plus kappa squared. So this is what I will do now. And uh, this tells you that indeed, the solution psi 0 equals 0 was a minimum. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, now we have to calculate this, right? We have this uh, interesting uh, property that the partition function Z is e to the lambda L V times integral d xi e to the minus beta epsilon over 2 integral d3r and I write it a slightly different way psi of r minus Laplacian plus kappa d square psi of r why do I write it like this because the, the only difference with respect to here is that the gradient psi you integrate you integrate once by part and this integral gradient psi square is equal to minus integral psi Laplacian psi okay now if you remember uh, what I showed you about Gaussian integrals before. So, Gaussian integrals, you will have that product over i dxi e to the minus one half xi aij xj is. So, I did it with a plus uh, bi xi summation over repeated indices this is a constant 2 pi to the n over 2 over square root of determinant of a times e to the 1 half bi aij minus 1 bj so in the continuum so we have something which is very similar to that but in the continuum right it's like a It's a quadratic form in the psi variables. So if you discretize this, it's really a form like this. So the result is generalized at the following way that integral d psi of r e to the minus one half psi of r a of r. So it's an integral dr dr prime psi of r a of r r prime minus or, or comma doesn't matter psi of r prime and this is the only thing that I will use so this b is zero so this is proportional up to an infinite factor which is here to e to the minus one half log determinant of a we saw this uh, already last time where determinant of a is the so-called Fredon determinant of the operator A. So the, right? And this, so if you remember that for any operator, determinant of A is product over alpha of lambda alpha, where lambda alpha are the eigenvalues of the operator A. This is E to the sum over alpha of log lambda alpha. So, of course, this assumes that A is definite positive, which means that all the eigenvalues, in order for this integral to make sense, all the eigenvalues of A should be positive, strictly positive. It can be zero, but then you have to be careful. But here we'll see that uh, there is no problem. So, and this is, Okay, it's e to the sum over alpha log lambda alpha, which you can write as exponential trace log of the operator A. So th this is an identity that one uses all the time in field theory. Determinant of operator A is the exponential of trace log A. Is this familiar to anybody? Yes? Okay. Sorry? Okay, so just to finish this, so you see that 
this is the operator A, which you can write as A of R minus R prime, is, so it's minus Laplacian plus kappa D square delta of R minus R prime, right? If you put it in, that's what you have. And therefore, the eigenvalues of these operators are obtained by Fourier transforming. When I've, yes, you have a question? No, you're just, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> just putting your sleeves up, okay. <laughs> That's an excellent question, thank you. <laughs> um, so, when you have any operator, which is a f any operator of R, R prime, if it's a function of R minus R prime, its eigenvalues are just the Fourier transforms of A of R minus R prime. So the eigenvalues of the operator A, and that's obvious, I mean, you just uh, write if you have integral D, the eigenvalues are by definition A of R minus R prime, uh, let's say uh, X of R prime, equals, uh, how can I call it, Eps, e, e, x of r. You can check easily that if you take x of r to be plane waves, so it means x of r equals e to the i k r, you can see that indeed you have a in integral, so let's call it x k, then you have uh, E equals A of tilde of K. Just replace and it's an exercise, it takes two seconds. So what I want to say is that the eigenvalues of the operator A are just A twiggle A tilde of K, where K is the Fourier transform component of this, and this is just K square plus kappa D square. So the result to which I wanted to get is that Z is essentially e to the lambda L V, e to the minus one half. So this is a result which is quite important. So it's e to the minus one half sum over all the eigenvalues K of log of K square plus kappa square. And when you take the continuous limit of these, this is just e to the lambda L V minus V over two integral D three pi, uh, D three K over two pi cube log K square plus kappa square. Okay, it's a bit fast. But whenever you have an integral, something like this, right? This integral, this functional integral here is just e to the minus one half trace log the operator which is here minus Laplacian plus kappa d square. And the trace log of this kappa d square is just v times the integral d3k over 2 pi cube of the log of the eigenvalue, which is k square plus kappa d square. Okay, it's maybe not completely trivial, but uh, okay, just so why did I want to show you this? Because, of course, the k. Uh, range from minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, the fact that K ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, plus infinity makes this integral divergent. And this is the first example of divergences uh, that you have at one loop. So these correction, quadratic corrections are called one loop corrections. So the one loop correction is divergent if you take K, so, you have this integral, you have to calculate something like integral d3k 
over 2 pi q log k square plus kappa d square. And this, if you go to spherical coordinates, so it's 4 pi integral from 0 to infinity dk k square over 2 pi q log k square plus kappa d square. So of course, this integral is widely divergent. So the way out of this is by introducing what's called a short distance cutoff or UV cutoff, ultraviolet cutoff, which is lambda. So what I do is I put lambda here. And lambda is finite. Lambda is a momentum, so it's 2 pi over a distance, A. And A is the, in fact, it's the smallest distance at which you can imagine that particle can come close together. So it's a short distance beyond which you don't know what happens, but essentially the ions cannot come close, closer than A. So in this, so when you have a field theory which is renormalizable, what you can show is that eventually the limit A going to zero exists, but here it's not the case. Here the theory depends on A, so you have to choose A, and everything will depend on one parameter, which is this cutoff A. So then you can do the calculations, and I will not do it because uh, everything takes longer than what I think. I had planned to do it. So I will stop here. You can, I can give you the result, actually. Yes, so the result is that but beta f over v, so to order zero, it's minus two c, that's order zero. And the next order correction is plus one over l, lambda cube over 12 pi square times minus kappa d over lambda square times one minus kappa d over lambda times minus one lambda over kappa d plus log of one plus kappa d over lambda square. Okay, so this is the final expression. So this is the zeroth order correction. And this is the one over L correction to the free energy, which means that this is the one loop for the quadratic fluctuations, corrections to the free energy as a function of lambda. So you don't have to write it just to show you. It's a, it's a bit lengthy calculation, but it's uh, possible. Okay, so I'll stop here for the course. I don't want to go beyond because it, 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 otherwise we will not have time to to come back to all this. So is there any question on this or on the, yes? There is still the L in the expansion. Where do you, you which L? L? Oh, yes, but now, now, so once you have done this, the, there is a correction of order one over L square, of course. So now you put L equals one. So if you put L equals one, this is an approximation to the free energy of the system to quadratic order. And what kinds of effects does this uh, free energy capture? It's the fluctuations around the mean field. So this is essentially it's the screening. The, the, the effect, so it's the fluctuations in the, in the screening, it's the fluctuations of densities, of uh, concentrations, of everything uh, in, the, in the system. What, what can I tell you more? <laughs> it's the, it captures the local inhomogeneities of the electrostatic potential, of the concentrations of everything.